Hello, my name is Lisa and I'm with the Shared Spaces team here at the University of Saskatchewan. Today I will be going through some considerations in setting up your space and lighting when doing 3D scanning at home. You can skip to relevant sections by clicking on the chapters in the description or by scrubbing to the markers in the timeline. For more information on using a specific 3D scanning app, check out the other videos in this series on our Shared Spaces channel. Make sure you have enough juice in your battery as a lot of these apps tend to use a lot of power to run. I'm gonna go into Kiri Engine here, one of the apps that we did a deep dive into and to a scan that I did a little bit earlier. Uh, you might think, wow, this is so cool. I've got the scan of my entire living room here. However, I also have some pictures of my family on the walls. My computer is open and this private information uh, might be visible uh, that might provide identifiers uh, that are being recorded. Be aware that in using many of these apps, you're giving the rights of your scans to the company that owns the app. So here I am in Luma AI. I'm gonna open one of these scans and it looks absolutely amazing, but I have a similar problem, even more so I would say that there's so much detail. What happens here in Luma AI is that these are actually geolocated to my address. Uh, so again, uh, you want, want to turn this off to hide this publicly, but just be aware that uh, this information will still be in the database that is being uploaded to Luma AI. So what I've done before I start scanning, I've removed all of the photographs off of the wall. I am closing my computer and also removing any other identifiers. Now I could of course choose to film in a public location rather than in my home if I have some privacy concerns. You can also check out our video on privacy and content control in our YouTube channel. So you can see here, I'm still in Luma AI. If I look around, my space is quite cluttered. So you wanna make sure that you push back all of the furniture in the space as much as possible and make sure that you don't have any things in your way that you might hit or trip on when you move around. So for example, I have these cables here that I could trip on and also edges of carpets can be a little bit treacherous um, as well. So just be aware of your surroundings when you're moving around your objects. So I'm in the app called WIDAR now and I'm going to start a new scan and hit the record button. This app takes automatic photos as I'm walking around my object. It might be tempting for me just to continuously walk in circles like this. If I do this, I'm going to get very, very dizzy very quickly. You might actually want to move your phone up and around while you're stationary in one position so that you don't get as dizzy. Next, let's consider the lighting. And you can see I've got a window, and if I move to the back of my object, it's gonna be really, really dark. If I come to the front, I'm gonna get a nice, natural, even lighting, which will give me a good result. Now, I don't need any fancy lights. I've got this lamp from my living room. I'm gonna turn this lamp on. The issue of doing this, the back of my lamp is now very, very warm in its lighting and the front of the lamp is very cool with the natural lighting. So it's going to give me an object that looks different front to back. So I've returned here in Scanniverse. It is now nighttime and all of the lights in my living room and hallway are on, my lamps are all on. So I've got a fairly even lighting. So I'm gonna walk around once before I scan so that you can see. Um, this lighting. So I'm outside because I wanted to show you what happens if you're working with natural light. The sun is going to give you great lighting, but it is also can be quite harsh. And some of that backlighting that I had inside might actually be accentuated if I'm outside and shooting against uh, the sun. The snow is actually causing a nice bouncing of light. So that's actually getting a little bit of lighting in the back of this object. If I come to the front, I can see that I get a nice bright look 
to my lamp. The other problem that you have in the sunshine is if I block the sun, then immediately I get this really, really heavy shadow. So I would just have to shoot my images for my scan by moving out of the way and moving my arm more than moving my um, full body. The other issue, obviously, that I have in this part of the country is that I need to make and shovel some space so that I can actually get around my object. I wanted to show you what lighting would look like on an overcast day. And if I move around my object, you can see I'm getting a fairly even lighting. Um, another way that you can get similar lighting is in the shade on a, uh, on a sunny day. So here I am in YDAR, looking at the scan that I did on the overcast day. You can see that I'm getting really even lighting. Uh, I'm just going to come around to the back, but I ended up getting a big hole in my scan. Uh, I think because it was really icy, I was uh, not being as careful in taking my photos, and that's probably why I got that hole. I find that in YDAR, sometimes these holes do appear. So here's the scan that I did in YDAR on the sunny day, and you can see the back of the lamp is considerably darker, and I'm getting some of those dark shadows, but the scan overall turned out really nicely. Here's an example of the object when it was scanned with the window open, but I've got a dark side and then I have a light side. If I go into Scaniverse, where I had the artificial light in the back and then the natural light in the front, you can see the difference between the coloration there. No natural light, all artificial lights, and you can see that I got a really good result. The lighting is really, really even, uh, and my scan looks really clean. Here we've got the lamp in a darkened space. There's a little bit of artificial light, and the star lamp is turned on. In complete darkness in Scaniverse, I'm also getting a good result, except for some of the arms of the star lamp are starting to merge with the darkness of the space. You're going to get various results depending on the app that you're using. Here is a lamp completely in the darkness um, in Luma AI, and you can see that it's actually created this kind of cloudy web. You might also see slippage of your object, so here we can see some pieces that are floating around. Here we are in YDAR. The issue here was in some mutation in the complete darkness with the lamp. And here in YDAR, I actually ended up with some holes uh, when all of the lights were turned off in my object as well. Here in Kiri, you can see some of the issue again was the lamp kind of attached itself to non-existent architecture in the space when the space was dark. These scans should show you that you are able to also, if you have an object that emits light, you are also able to use that in a completely darkened space. I'm here in Blender where I've brought in all of the scans that I've done across the four scanning apps that we've been looking at through our shared spaces pathways. And what I see is that I'm going to get drastically different results depending on the lighting situation, but also depending on the app that I'm using as well as the tool that I'm using. So for example, here you can see the difference with the scan here in Luma AI in a darkened space where I have an iPhone or where I'm using the iPad. And you might be noticing there's some gaps in my chart because I was even having difficulties importing some of those files into Blender and getting them out of the app. I can also see difference in coloration and quality between the different apps, Kiri Engine, Ganiverse, Luma AI, and YDAR. Scanning 3D objects is just one of the steps that we cover in our AR Production Pathways learning materials. Please visit our Shared Spaces website or YouTube channel to find other videos for your augmented reality workflow.